Hi guys, PJ here, and today I'm working on a 2018 Cactus. I'm going to show you how to install a front dash cam so that it goes on and off with your ignition system and basically hide all the cabling so it looks as factory fitted as possible. I'm going to be connecting this to the vehicle's fuse box with a simple plug and play uh, fitting kit rather than doing any soldering or cutting of wires. In other words, if your car's a hire car or something like that, or a lease car, you can return it back to normal very quickly without any damage to the car. So let's go and have a quick look at the tools we're going to need to do this job. This is my basic setup that I'll be using. Most important one being a plastic leverage tool. These are available from eBay, Amazon. They're about a pound, two pounds. Most car shops sell them. Very important, you don't want to be pl levering plastic car trim with a flat blade screwdriver. You'll put big dints in it, it'll look horrendous. So get yourself one of these or something similar. Quite a firm thing, look. Very, very useful. Some snips, some long nose pliers, a bit of electrical tape, a couple of cable ties, and a multimeter or a test probe screwdriver, one of the things that looks like a screwdriver and lights up when you touch a circuit. We're going to be using this or the screwdriver for touching the top end of the fuses to check for a live, okay, in combination with using your owner's manual to get an ignition switched live fuse, such as heater blower motor, that type of thing. We won't be using any circuit that's for ABS, airbags, nothing critical, yeah, so just an auxiliary circuit. First things first, we need to remove a panel. Your fuse box is located on this, this is a right-hand drive car, passenger side, and it's behind this panel. It's in fact the panel I was just using as a little table. There we go, it pops off, it's on little clips, look. Recommend you pull the bottom piece off first, followed by the top, because if you're not careful, if you pull it funny, you can actually make a mess of this, it's really soft and it'll put a crease line in it, so you don't want to do that. So just take care when you're taking the top edge off that you don't crease any of this. It's meant to pop off, it's meant so you can get to the fuse box. Now the fuse box is located there, which is quite buried, and that is why I have the long nose pliers to pull the fuses out of that fuse box. So with this panel out of the way, let's put that safely out of the way, we can then start working on our power cable. This is a dash cam fitting kit. I'm fitting an X-Base camera to this car. Each individual brand normally has its own kit. Highly recommend you buy one of these, very useful. Comes with everything you need to hardwire it to the vehicle. In the box, you get replacement power cable. This one terminates in mini USB. On the other end, we have a red power cable there, terminates in a bullet connector, and an earthing spade to put behind a chassis bolt or such like, something to the vehicle's bare metal chassis to earth it out. In addition to that, you get a couple of other bits. You get these. You get two fuse spurs. Fuse spur basically doubles up the socket in the fuse box where you've removed the fuse from that you're going to be using. So in other words, the fuse on the outer edge here, which is a 2 or a 3 amp, that runs the camera. The inner fuse will be the original fuse that you've pulled out of your fuse box, and then obviously this shoves in. The other end's on a bullet, and you guessed it, it connects to this power cable just here. Normally come with two or three different fuse sizes in these packs. This is a larger one for commercials and older vehicles, not going to be using that. On this Citroen uh, Cactus, it's a mini blade fuse, which is this size. Now you also got micro blade with the they're very near to each other the spades are this is a mini blade fuse on this particular car do check your car first just pull a fuse out and see if it's a mini or a micro you know a micro because they're right next to each other the blades are should be a mini or well, uk spec ones are anyway last of all we get a ferrite filter which is one of these things it's on clips and hinges it opens up and you basically wrap as near to the connection as possible power cable through it around the bottom of it and then back out again and that's to suppress DAB interference. They work with limited success, so be warned. DAB, a mm, bit iffy with, with some cameras, not really a cure for it yet. So let's go ahead, prepare the power cable, and we'll cut to that. Okay, so this is what you're looking at with your ferrite filter attached. Like I say, they do spring open, they're on hinges, and all we've done is we'll open it up, gone through the middle of it, wrapped it around the outside of it, and then back out again. We've also got cable tie here that I've basically wrapped around it, snipped off and then covered in tape. Now this is to bulk the cable up so that it doesn't drop down from above the headlining. Headlines are 
very soft. If you hit a big pot or the last thing you want is the cable dangling down in front of your window screen. The reason I put tape around it is when you cut them, they are quite sharp. Now, in theory, it could rub through the, the soft headlining from the inside and make a bit of a mess of it. This is just to pad it out. So I put two or three of these across, depending on the sort of length of the window screen area. Normally a couple's enough. And then we're going to tuck this up above the headlining. You don't need any special tools to just ease your headlining down a, a little tiny bit. You just use your fingers and just sort of grab it and uh, coax it down a little bit. Don't cut it like a bull in a china shop. It's really, really fragile stuff, so just ease it. Okay, so we've tucked out our cable up. Like I say, you could just ease it with your fingers. And we've ended up here, look, next to the mirror. There we go. All the way along here until we get to here. Next thing we're going to do is pull the rubber trim off, which can be quite sticky if it's a brand new car. There we go, pull that down. And if you flex this forward, there's an airbag behind there, as you can see. Now, don't worry, you won't set it off, but don't, you know, you've got it one. Or you can put your finger behind it, flex it forward, and tuck your cable from this point here like i say you can sort of pull that forward tuck it behind the airbag and then all the way down the side if you get like trouble feeding it behind the airbag it's ideal to sticky tape a thick cable tie to the cable and sort of use it as a guide to poke it behind so it pops out the other side and you can run it down a bit fiddly but it is you know the correct way of doing things and then we're going to run the cable all the way down this edge until we get to here Right, with our power cable down here, next up we're going to pull this piece off. And by pull, I mean pull. There we go. Off it comes. This exposes a nice 13mm nut here or here as an earthing point. Go ahead and remove one of those bolts so you can use it as an earthing point. Now what I normally do is chop off the, the little spade connector and put a full ring connector on it. Um, they're a bit feeble, the ones that come with the kit. You don't have to, it's just a precaution. I do, you know, hundreds of these sort of jobs every year. So, and then a washer behind it. And then we're gonna pop that straight back in the hole it came from. And there we go. While the cover's off, take advantage of the gap, pop yourself your power cable through to the fuse box area, and then obviously you're free to slide your cover back on again. There we go. And then we're down to the last thing, the fuse box connection. So what we're going to do is use the auxiliary circuit, second row in, bottom fuse, 5 amp, touching the terminal on the top of the fuse with the ignition on. There you go, 12 and a half volts. If we turn the ignition off, that should go to zero. Just be aware there's a bit of a delay on the ignition system with these vehicles, so you have to wait a few minutes for the circuit to go dead. There you go, key off, fuse completely dead. We can now pull that fuse and use that for our fuse spur. There's the fuse plugged in the fuse spur, the one we've just removed, we can get the camera to focus. It doesn't want to have it, does it? Doubled up, plugged in, and now we're going to sort of get behind here. I mean, this, these fuse boxes are recessed and are really awkward to get to, they're an absolute pain in the neck. But basically, we're going to plug that where that fuse came from in the bottom there. Well, there it is, we can get a camera picture of it. Try and orientate your fuse that way round so the power flows through it correctly. And that's basically your power supply and your earth done. Next thing is to test your camera. Ignition on. And there we go. Blue light and power's up. And that's it guys. If it does that, you've just got to basically clip your little fuse box cover back on and uh, shove your rubber seal back on. And that's it, you've done it, well done. That's how you fit a dash cam in a cactus. Thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, pop them at the end in the comments there. 
Um, it can take me a couple of days to get back to you because I do get inundated with questions every single day. But thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.